For the first time ever in the eighth season of Legendary Star Ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cyber Arena, home of, well, Starladder Season 8. We're now into the loser's bracket, our first matchup of the day. It was Na'Vi versus Fnatic, and in Game 1, Na'Vi just ran away with it. Yeah, Fnatic did not even have the lead, which is really scary. I, I don't... Uh, their morale must be really shaking coming into in Game 2, because they're just one loss away from Elimination, and in the Fnatic, or Fnatic Alliance games, they had a decently sized lead in the first game, and... I mean, and this series they didn't even have that. Yeah, or so, so far this series, their morale is probably pretty low right now. And I mean, look at the game stats for last game; it was just a beatdown of pretty epic proportions. Uh, the team GPM they were ahead by almost 500, which is a lot. Uh, in fact, a little bit more than that. And I mean, it felt worse than these stats, to be honest. Just yeah. like in terms of the momentum of the game. The map control, there was like never a moment where you're like, okay, Fnatic's making a comeback now. That one fight they had top was a three for two, slight win for them there, but that was pretty much it for the entire game. Yeah, I think they could have GG like 10 minutes ago. And I just, I don't, I don't think thing. that draft suited Fnatic at all. It, it really it, The did. draft really continues to be the problem for this team. Mm -hmm. Like when they get their heroes that they're comfortable with, it's like they just can't find something else, right? Because they're not getting Tiny Wisp. They're not going to get profit for Trixie probably. And uh, Honey, he doesn't really play DK that much. Like yeah. it's not his hero. Yeah, uh, whereas this game, Dendi right. got his hero. He got Invoker, and he did a lot of work with it. Right. I think it's really important to give these two players the heroes that they want. Like, Dendi plays OD a lot, but I also don't feel like OD is his hero. It's more his hero than, like, it's more his, it's Magnus like or something. Magnus is probably on the bottom, and then, like, like DK. He's in the middle. He's, DK is really good. It's just yeah. he can, you can only do so much as right. DK. Right. DK is, like, a little bit above that, and then it's OD, and then it's, like, all the other, like, yeah. you know, Puck Storm, Puck, Puck, Storm, yada, yeah. yada. <laughs> And Havost's I, li I loved Havost's Kunkka as well last mm -hmm. game. And, I mean, I think Luna is a good hero for Era, but he just didn't get enough space to farm. He didn't really go greedy. But I think Luna does work for this team. I think that was a fine pick. Mm -hmm. um, Lifestealer would have been nice, too, or Weaver, but those were banned. So. Yeah, they banned Lifestealer themselves, though, surprisingly. Yeah, really showing some respect for Havost there. Mm -hmm. Did... I think they had first pick coming out of that second phase. Yeah. Though. So they could have taken it because Navi kind of had to ban Pugna. So if they didn't ban Lifestealer in their second pick, second ban, they could have immediately taken it instead. And we're into the draft now. It's game number two, guys. Navi versus Fnatic. If Fnatic loses, they go home. Their Starlighter run will end here. They barely made it into the, the playoffs, in fact. It was almost Rock's Kiss who came here. And for Fnatic, that would be a very disappointing early exit. After a long strain of second place finishes, this would be... I mean, they kind of expect to get to the finals in most events, but they got a long road to get there, Ben, and it has to start here with the Game 2 win. As for Na'Vi, uh, winners of nearly every Star Ladder except the one that the Retry won uh, before it was called Star Ladder, uh, and, of course, the most the, the Alliance won two Star Ladders ago. But outside of that, they've been winning almost every single event. So I still feel like Na'Vi could make a run all the way. Fnatic looking a bit shaky here, but they'll try and bounce back in Game 2. And they get Alk this time around. I think they're going to be really happy with Alchemist. I'm surprised, a little bit surprised that they took Venomancer instead of Crystal Maiden because that duo has worked out really well for them. Navi going with a different kind of offlaner. They had access to the Clockwork again, but they go for the much higher damage output one. Less of a tempo controller. The Timber Saw is the choice. Doesn't match up. I mean, these supports match up pretty decently against Timber's boss, especially Alk, who can reduce his armor a lot and just does so much damage anyway that can help you bring him down, but... I mean, Venomancer can pretty much zone out almost any... Including any Timbersaw. Hero, including yeah. Timbersaw. So I think these are good supports to deal with the Timbersaw, as far as it goes, but he's still very hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. And Slark actually gets the ban. Something that did not work for Fnatic at all yesterday. They've had some... I've seen some games where it's worked out all right for them as, like, uh, as Era's hero, but... Not not at this event. Has not it's not seemed to match up well. But Navi will ban it anyway. Yeah, well, Navi might want to take a life stealer up at this point. They're kind of in the same position as Fnatic was last game. Had they not banned life stealer, they could have just taken it right coming out of the second phase. Yeah, going for a, like a an off laner that's going to need more farm. I think that's for getting getting a carry or a, a one position hero for Havost that can get involved earlier. Just mm -hmm. balances things out nicely. So life steal. I mean, Kunkka again would be not very bad. good versus Venom though. Yeah, Kunkka's good. Kunkka could be an option. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Weaver gets banned again. 
I think one really. But uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think one really important part about Kunkka is that he lets your team get their spells off with the boat, and we saw like Puppy and Kuro like survive to miraculous lengths last game. So I think they could definitely go back to it, too. Yeah, and for Fnatic, Navi seems to just be anything they can do to deny them having like a very mobile, hard to shut down lineup. So they ban out the Slark, the two global heroes in the first stage, and then the Weaver. So the elusive mm. carries the great global presences. Now there's still a life stealer and storm in the pool, and they go for the life stealer here. So maybe we see some life stealer bombs this game from Fnatic. Navi probably won't be going for a storm of their own because they've got the deadly invoker. So. I think that could work out nicely for them, and it kind of suits their their players a lot better. That would be a much better draft for Fnatic, I feel, yeah. than, than last game. And they don't, they don't really have good lockdown for Storm either. I think Storm would be a really good pick. Yeah, there's just, what, Cold Snap, I guess, and that's really about it. Deafening Blast, maybe, kind yeah. of. This could be good for Fnatic, but I guess the question is, how will the lanes match up? Lifestealer versus Timbersaw, he's got great supports backing him up. Right. Should do well there. And Storm will do fine versus Invoker. And then the off lane for Trixie, I mean, that's, we'll see. Clockwork is still in the pool, actually, so maybe they go to that. Ooh. Clockwork Storm Lifestealer. That, that would be a really well-rounded draft from Fnatic. They could take towers. They can row Shirley, teamfight effectively. There was not a Shadow Demon pick that just flashed up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is done manually. And, in fact, yeah. it is a Shadow Shaman. Uh-oh. Interesting. Navi are on the dire side, by the way. Mm -hmm. I've seen Puppy play support Shadow Shaman a couple of times. It's pretty good. Not the strongest in the laning stage, but mm -hmm. we'll have to see if Fnatic looks to punish it and go aggressive. They have they, the they have summons. the option to do it for now. That's now if they that, do that, that's th difficult to go aggressive. Life Stealer, Veno, Alk. That's <laughs> that's a nightmare of a lane. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of lockdown, a lot of burst damage, and you know what's Shadow Shaman going to do when you just rage and strut up to him? He's going to cry. Those heroes are too slow. Yeah. to, to contest. We'll have to wait and see. Navi, last pick for them uh, after these bans. They have their offlaner for Phonic. It's really just Havos here at this point. What is his hero this game? What do you think? Clockwork, that's kind of obvious that they'd go for that. Best yeah. offlaner remaining in the pool. Gyro's a safe bet. Uh, Kuka, he's not that terribly great for his life sealer because his damage is then like burst. He can't really just man up. Running, uh, rage. And when he, if he just rages and goes on you, you just can't do anything except right. drop your boat and just try and live through it. Mm -hmm. X isn't effective because he has rage. So yeah, it's not the best matchup. What other ones are there? Weaver, Weaver? would have been really good, but it's, yeah. it's banned out. Hmm. I mean, there's Marana. Marana would be pretty good here. Good against a lot of these heroes. The only one she has trouble with is Al because that stun just follows you no matter what. Right. It's very good versus the other three, though. So Marana probably... And it's a hero that doesn't need that much help compared to other carries, which I think is good when you've got slightly greedier solos, mm -hmm. like Timbersaw, Invoker, heroes that take a de suck a decent amount of farm off the map. They could go for a Luna themselves if they wanted to apply a lot of pressure to towers early, but... Doesn't match up well against uh, Lifestealer in particular. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, if they're trading safe lane farm, though, it's, yes. it's okay. And the laning stage can struggle. I don't know what Fnatic's going to do. Fnatic could do aggro. Yeah, they really could. I mean, Shadow Shaman Crystal Maiden, both awful base move speed, very squishy, low base armor, weak in a tri-lane versus tri-lane uh, if they get gone upon, and most certainly... Fnatic have the initiation range, especially with uh, the Alk stun. Yeah, the positioning of the supports is going to be really important for Navi. Like Clockwork Hook, Life Stealer, and Fest Bombs, potentially with Fnatic's uh, upcoming pick, getting hit by Alchemist stun is just going to spell immediate death for those. Yeah, even in, I mean, even like Invoker is pretty much dead if he gets Alk stun too. So I, the other option for Fnatic is they can just roam these supports, like constant dual roam. Life Stealer is a fairly independent farmer. Clockwork, very independent as a solo. Uh, and we'll see what the solo mid is. They like doing the dual room too. I think Storm will be the choice here now, especially with the puck getting bad. Storm's like okay for Shadow Shaman, though the Hex is, proves to be pretty and darn annoying. It's like yeah, a that's that's true. And that's the other great thing about the Shadow Shaman pick is it gives them the lockdown they didn't have and discourages a Storm pick, perhaps. Mm -hmm. As we see, actually, Navi go Viper. So we, something we saw from Bulldog yesterday. Very, very... Uh, he seems like a very strong pick for these kind of like group up and take a tower here or there style strats. And the Shadow Shaman lends itself towards that. The Invoker lends itself towards that. Timbersaw, a good five-man hero. Even though Viper's single target, because he's just tanky and can build the mech early and is good in these long-duration fights, also matches up well against Lifestealer. The mech's really important, though. I think it's probably the most important part about the Viper pick here. It frees up the Timbersaw to go for a greedier build. He'll probably be heading towards a Bloodstone early. Mm-hmm. 
Fnatic just missing a solo mid for Hani. Do Storm. they risk the Storm pick here, even against Shadow Shaman? Mm, I'm trying to think of the other options besides Storm that are decent. Invoker's already taken. Puck's banned out. Queen of Pain would, Not the best would get vehicle. wrecked. Yeah. Um, who else is there? Just Storm. Dragon Knight, if they just give up on the Lifestealer bombs or, or rely on the Clockwork to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem with Clockwork being the vehicle is it's such a long cooldown ultimate. And yeah. And it's a little bit harder. You can't count on it the way that you can Storm Zipping in. Like, you're going to find the hero. Mm -hmm. You can always mess up that hook shot. I think the solo mid is going to be a really important pick for them to do because Honey was not really that much of a factor. They're down to game. 10 seconds here. Yeah. The clock's ticking. They're going to have to make a choice very soon. What's it going to be, Fnatic? Random? Oh, the oh, Pugna. That was, that was unexpected. And the last pick for Fnatic is a Pugna. Pugna's really good for Shadow Shaman. I think this is a good pick. Good for first Fnatic. Viper as well, actually. Yeah, you can no longer orb walk while mm -hmm. decrept, so. I don't necessarily think that it's Hani's hero, though, which is my slight concern. They might actually do an Alchemist. Oh, no. Hani is playing Pugna. Hani, Pugna. Well, both teams changing it up, especially Fnatic here. Uh, a very different draft this time around, Ben. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how confident they are with it, though, because they were, like, yeah. down to the wire, down to the last second. Yeah, it's like, pick something. We have to now. But yeah. it doesn't feel like Fly had the... It's like, all right, it's this is what we want. Th we're yeah. going for it. You Navi need a lot of confidence. Navi were much quicker with their picks. And, hey, they've got the one-game advantage. They should feel more confident. And the first pick invoker, too. Pretty awesome. And on that note, guys, we're about to hop into the game. You can see Navi now just... Chill in as they get into it. They're up 1-0 in the best of three. Winner moves on to play the loser of Alliance versus Sigma. That match coming up a few hours later today. And on that note, let's introduce our team. Ben, on the dire side, we have Team Navi. Funnick will be handling your timber saw. Puppy, the Crystal Maiden. Kuroki, for me, was the star of the show in game one, at least. And he was playing an amazing Visage. This time around, Shadow Shaman, not quite as much of a playmaking support generally. But we'll see what he can do here. Dendi reprising his role in the Invoker pull Tangos. Early Null Talisman for him. And Havost, another more of an early to mid-game hero once again. The Viper, uh, a hero that can get involved pretty early on. And on the Radiant side, we have Era on his probably best hero, the yes, Life Sealer. definitely his signature hero. Yeah. Hani on the Pugna, which I have not seen before. I will have the pleasure of watching that. Trixie on the offlane Clockwork. And Fly as the Venomator and No-Tail as the roaming support duo on the Alchemist. Neither team going to go aggressive here. Both teams could tend to farm. Oh, aggressive in terms of their lanes. That being said, Fnatic in particular have the amazing dual realm combo. Pugna provides a lot of early game burst, and I, if they want to make a, an early first blood attempt on this middle lane, uh, that could definitely be in the cards. But for now, it's just Trixie heading to the off lane and Era preparing for the creep block. So they'll check the bottom rune. I, what I, I do like for Fnatic is that they've got the really strong roaming supports, and that's something that's been important to them in previous matches so and an early haster and dropped here as well navi also has their two observer wards on the top lane and fanatic's not doing an aggressive so Look they won't this. have vision on the bottom part a lot of wards towards that bottom side of the map uh, not putting not leaving anything for trixie but he's just going to be cog blocking the creeps and basically looking to never leave puppy his standing right here he's expecting a gank in mid trying to protect dendy but the problem is when they smoke there's nothing you can do about it and they do have a smoke already just camping the haste room bottom. Has Navi even seen this haste? I don't know if Funnick spotted it earlier. I think he saw it. Well, he at least saw it. Oh, no. It they're the making it go on mid. Dendi. This could be our first blood. Diving deep. Watch out, Dendi. Watch out, Dendi. There's your blast. The stun's going to fly. And now Dendi dropping low, dropping fast. One more right click. One more right click. Down he goes. No tail delivers with a huge first blood. And Navi, they never saw that haste turn. Obviously, or Dendi would have been playing more, much farther back. This is so crucial for Fnatic, just getting an early lead. But Dendi's already back. I don't even think he missed a creep. Yeah, that's the benefit of dying this early. Yeah. Uh, pretty unusual not even to miss one. But mm -hmm. still a first blood. Big for the Alk. He'll have the early boots to continue roaming. And As for the off lanes, they were very important last game. Navi got a lot more out of theirs. Is that going to be the case this time around? The Timber saw under a quite heavy harassment. But Trixie also getting levels bottom lane. So which off lane do you think will get more this time around, Ben? Mm, I think uh, it pr probably Trixie, just because I think Puppy's jungling most of the time. Um, but eh, it's about even, I'd say. Both of them are really difficult to zone out. Clock and Tender are probably the two best offlaners in this version. And we'll have to see if that's how it shakes out. But for now, they're, they're quite even in terms of experience here. Uh, one slight concern for Navi is that Kuroki is only level one. He still has not gotten a level No-tail, stunning out Funnick. 
Yeah, not gonna be able to kill him, but just simple harassment and picks up a DD rune. This is gonna hurt, but Phonic Timber chains up and now we'll be trapped a bit on the high ground. No tail pursuing him. He figures he's trapped and he's right. He's got a stun here. Not gonna be able to get that kill solo though. Yeah, but now Dendi still has to feel very scared. He doesn't have uh, the support mid. He doesn't have any wards the, on the bottom lane. You know, it's the opposite of last game. Last game, it was constantly Hani under harassment. And this game, it's Dendi who's feeling the pressure. Another another initiation. This support Alk. My goodness. What other hero could do this this early on? Funny. He's almost killing the enemy offlaner by himself. Sure, he's got a DD rune, but... Regardless. Meanwhile, top lane, Trixie. A lot of harassment onto Kuroki, but won't be able Ooh. to bring him down. Now gets shackled. Now Sunstruck. Trixie overextending, underestimating the power of Navi. He was so close to killing Kuroki there. Yeah, he so almost had close. If he cogged him in, he would have gotten the kill probably while dying. Very nice turnaround from Kuroki. As soon as he saw that he missed the cog, turn around and shackle. Perfect uh, setup for the Sunstrike. Havost and Era very even in terms of last hits. Uh, so the carry's performing equally well so far. Hani... 12 and 1 to Dendi's 11 and 5. So despite the death, Dendi, he's still farming well. But eventually, the thing is, whenever there's a Pugna in the lane, the tower just starts getting blasted. And then it starts dropping. And especially if they kill Dendi here, this tower will take a lot of damage. So Dendi, he can only keep this tier 1 alive for so long. But like you said, the Forge Spirits do help a bit to pull the wave. Why are you trying to push a wave so he can uh, get a stun off? No two already charging up. Coming in through the trees, lurking in the wings. And he'll find Dendi, but no acid spray. He Not canceled his salve, I think. Yeah, Dendi. I mean, doing a decent job considering the, the pressure he's been under, but he's been under a lot of pressure. Trixie's all, or sorry, um, Fennec has also been in a lot of pressure from Fly. Fly's just constantly harassing him. I think Fenno is probably the best support just to zone out a, a mm -hmm. timber saw like this. Yep. Because what can he actually do? I mean, he's n he's not going for any points in Whirling Death, but even if you do, you could just gale you and then kite you. You'll never get in range to use it, and you can maybe timber chain through him, but basically you're just hiding at the tower. Yep. He also, he also doesn't have any points of Whirling Death going for the double t uh, timber chain, which is not bad in this game. Yeah, we'll probably see at least two points of reactive armor, and then I'll most likely start maxing the nukes. That's generally the build you'll see. <coughs> And for the meantime, Fnatic diving bottom lane, charging an Alk stun. Nope, they don't have mana for it. No mana on no tail. This is really hurting them, but they're still committed to this dive without the Alk stun. This is not going to work out for them. They need to retreat, and they need to do it fast. The subject there, they find Era. They bring him down. What a disaster for Fnatic. That was not how they scripted it, Ben. Nice sun strike from Dendi, a nice block from Puppy they, there. They no tell. Uh, I, either Fnatic didn't hear him or he just didn't call out that he didn't have mana. Without the mana for the Oxstone, that was never going to work. Yeah, he had a clarity in his inventory. I'm not sure why he didn't pop He was actually early. being claritied, but he just mm -hmm. didn't get enough mana from it in oh, time. Oh, I see. So he just didn't regen fast enough. Unfortunate. And that's a big kill, too. The safe lane life throw that was even. Hani. Uh, now middle lane, they go in on Hani, they're going to find him here, Sunstrike brings him low, cold snap, not enough, Hani lives, but the Forge Spirit, oh, Dendi almost was able to right click him from the low ground, the Forge Spirit not quite high enough level to, to get that last auto attack off there. Not taking any chances, just TPing back home. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Fnatic now with their first smoke of the game, and oh, by the way, no tail rushing medallion. This is a crucial early game item for Alk. You get this out, and that stun goes from... Pretty strong to ridiculous in a matter of seconds. Yep, looking to kill Funnick, but they have to burst him down very quickly. This time they do have Alk stun, though. And that, that's pretty important. Fnatic, they will charge the stun. They'll gale him as well. But he timber chains, and it's already level 3. Is it enough? The stun's going to follow me. Just TPs out quickly. Again, Funnick, just really good presence of mind under pressure both games so far. Whenever they go on him, he just knows exactly when he can TP out. He's too poor for boots, but... He has his bottle, he has level 5 too, and he hasn't died, so he's doing phenomenally. Yeah, and you compare how much pressure he's been under, Puppy's just been jungling. So Trixie dying just basically to the duel lane and the sun strike. Uh, he w almost had a kill, but the result is that Navi's two heroes keeping the enemy offlaner down equally well as uh, Fnatic's three. Trixie. And they go on him now. The Hex is there, the sun strike's there as well, it nails him again, but one more right click might be needed. Nope, the poison. Brings him down. Havost gets the kill. And Havost, already the buckler out, has the reign of regen. This is going to be like a 9-10 minute mech. That's a very fast mech. If he runs into the cogs, does Clockwork get corrosive skin? I think so. That would have been some next level play. Well, how does it, if you have like a, I know with summons, it's the summons that take the damage. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works for cogs. Do you know how, with spirit bearers at the same? 
I uh, was Spear Bear. I think it's the bear. Yeah, yeah, it's the bear. But I don't know about things like cogs. I'm not sure either. That's a good question, Ben. I don't know. Well, it well, didn't matter. I was, I'm sure someone is answering us in chat right now, but we can't alt tab or you'd be reading the chat instead of watching the game. So uh, we'll find out. We'll find out after this broadcast, perhaps. But uh, or you can always tweet at us at LD Dota at Merlini Dota. But for now, guys, we'll continue with the cast. So. I think for Navi, the key thing is they're getting a really early mech on Viper, and this can just break the game open for them. And Era has died. I think that's probably... No tail. Oh, boy. Dendi, like, kind of turned around for a second there, <laughs> trying to bait No Tail in, but just playing with him in the stun range not long enough. I think it's smart for him to go to the early Basilius. He needs to armor versus Alk so he doesn't take a bajillion damage from that stun. They actually have gone for two Bassias. Viper has picked one up as well. Uh, the Basilius is also just good because it helps deal with your mana issues as Exhort Invoker. Sunstrike is quite expensive, 175. I believe it used to be 200, but hold that thought. In the jungle, they found Puppy. He was just AFK farming woods, and he's going to pay with his life. Down he goes. Fnatic, I mean, we talked about it. It's the rotations that really define this team in the laning stage. And mm -hmm. Last game, they didn't have any. This game, great rotations. Kuroki already has his arcane boots. I have no idea how he farms this m finds this much farmer support. He has been involved in all three kills. In the meantime, Pugna also went for a treads instead of an arcane boots. That means he's not going to be able to pressure towers that heavily. Who's going to build the arcane boots? Either Alks rushing a medallion. I Veno will probably. They build might some. just not get arcane boots. Uh, they may. Maybe they get them on Trixie. I mean, generally phase boots seem to be the more popular choice. But yeah, with Pugna not picking them up, other heroes have to fill the slack. And I mean, he can bottle crow, but. Even Battle Crow is not really enough for Pugna. He just has such such low cooldown nukes. What's another blast? It's six seconds? Five and a half seconds. Yeah, it takes a lot of mana. He's one of the most mana intensive heroes in the game. Puppy's coming in with the smoke. They're going to rock right into Trixie. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not where Trixie wants to be. Wrong neighborhood for him, and the Sunstrike secures the kill. Dendi picks up another. And these, these ganks are really helping him after that first blood. He's just It's like he never died. He's farming really well. Yeah, I mean, it's important for them to get the kill, but again, they didn't really get that much out of it because they couldn't keep Oh, they might off. now, though. They're pushing top lane. Ooh. And meanwhile, middle lane, they've gone in on Dendi. He's in trouble. Constant pressure on the poor Dendimon. Gailed up, brought down fast, but not dead yet. He will fall. The turnaround comes now, though. Kuroki charges in. He might pay with his life. He will as well. That's a two for one. He underestimated the damage from that nether ward. And Acid Spray does a lot of damage as well. Just standing in it, taking the right clicks. Great trade for Fnatic. They're really cruising in this game so far. Yeah, they're going to get the mid tower too, so this is a really nice break for them. And with Pugna here, the tower is going to fall. No chance to deny it. Fnatic, first tower of the game. Last game, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes in. They didn't even have a tier one down. Great start. Yep, I'm checking Eros farm. He did not opt for Midas this game, but he already does have phase and but, drums. But, Ben, I do want to mention Kroki's level six. So maybe we see Navi with the mech, uh, as well as the, the early wards, trying to sneak a Roche here. Mm -hmm. They don't have that T1 tower up. That T1 tower is pretty important to taking That's down Rojan. It would be a risky, but mm -hmm. I mean, their their heroes are well suited for it. Ford Spirits, good against Roche. They don't have an early medallion, though. Maybe the one thing they want to wait for. There was a Clockwork or f uh, Rocket Flare right inside the pit, but it has expired, and Navi has pinged out on the pit. Looks like they do want to do that Roshan. No Tail looking for him, but he's going to run into two supports. Charging up the hill all by his lonesome. He doesn't have level 6 yet. He walks into Puppy. He walks into Kuroki suddenly. He's like, I don't want to be here. Uh-uh. Backs off. They won't be able to catch him, though. Bit too fast. And this is the one thing with Shadow Shaman is just that atrocious base move speed. Yeah, well, I, I, Puppy was like, oh, crap, they're all coming. But it was only one, and they turned around. But a little bit too late. And Era phase drums. So he's really caught up in farm. He was down like 10 CS to Havost at one point, I believe. But uh, despite the death earlier, keeping the pace more or less, and... Seems like Fnatic want to make a move here. They've got a no smoke, actually. It's on cooldown. They just want to defend Roshan. They want to make sure that Navi just doesn't get a free one. But Navi are just taking advantage of this. Phonix free farming top. Timbersaw can just apply pressure. And Dendi's finally getting some time to farm. And I I think we may have forgotten to mention it, uh, but Tavos did get that tier one top at one point. Yeah, he got it right right before Hani got the tower to mid. And the Alk Sun comes out onto the Viper. Now the pressure mounts. No Tail just zoning them back. There is There are another wards. There is a mech. This is a dangerous fight for Fnatic, but with Blast, it's just a Acid Spray and Blast Spam, it's like and the wards, I mean, it's like, what do you do? Do you walk into that and fight? Even no, normally, not. The, normally the team with Nether or uh, Plague Wards and Mech just takes that fight, but not against this Fnatic lineup. Oh, they smoked and they wanted to wrap around, but Puppy immediately got revealed. Does Fnatic actually try and force this tier 2 now? 
they can. They can just slow siege with the Plague Wars and the Pugna Blast. No big deal. Pugna continuing to be a, a presence in another game here at Star Ladder. He's really... I mean, this is the second game, but the second game where he's had a huge impact. That's two towers down. That's two more than Fnatic got in, like, the first 20 minutes last game. Yep, Kuroki eyeing Roshan. He did smoke up, but again, another rocket flare in there. They are very, very wary of that. Stun's gonna fly, and, out, and Havos mechs up immediately, negating some of the damage with the additional armor. Well played by him. It just doesn't take that much damage. Yeah, seems like uh, the mech really seems to be working out. And he's got the Basilius as well, so plus 10 armor. That's a lot. And now Funnick is here. Dendy's off farming mid. I mean, it's, this is not actually working. They're, they have not damaged the tower yet. And now the Lifestealer bomb. This will be the way in. They found the opening. They go right on Puppy. The wards get dropped, though. Two heroes trapped in it. Now the CM ultimate. Oh, that's a lot of damage. But Era tanks through most of it. He had the rage up. So in the end, it's a one for one. Now there's a four staff on Dendi. They might look to use it here to dive. They four staff in a boat. He's going to focus. Great Chakram. Another good new combo coming out from Funnick. And now the Sun Trick is well on to Hani. See ya, Hani. Slams it home. Funnick with a great poke through there. And in the end, it's a three for one. Now when Fnatic loses a push that badly in a five man, they only got a Crystal Maiden. They lost Pugna, the most important hero, and two others. And now they can't really push anymore after they, that, that failed one. They just got really impatient there. It's like, uh, this isn't working. We got to go for something. But right. they needed to focus down that Shadow Shaman before he dropped wards. And they then, the CM is not the hero you want to go on there. Right. If they hook shot the Shadow Shaman, then it's a little bit different. And wow, I have no idea what Clock so, was doing there. By so phone, so. someone was TP'd in, canceled their TP right as Trixie ran in. So uh, Trixie just fed at that point. That wasn't totally his fault, though. It seemed like he thought his teammate was going to come defend the tower. <laughs> it just left him on an island. Poor guy. That was a really crucial fight for uh, Fnatic, though. Now that they lost that, they kind of lose Roshan control, too. Yeah, the Tier 1 does fall. They still have their Tier 1 mid. But they can't actually like take a fight on five fight. They, yeah, the hook shot was just way too far away. It's like across and it's not the, the trees. Right, and it's not the right hero. Like right. it needs to be. I feel like it needs to be the invoker, mm -hmm. or the Rasta. Probably the two ideal ones to catch. Yep. Although Denny got four staff in the middle of that fight, so maybe not the best target anymore. Yeah. N I mean, now it's really difficult, especially if Denny's uh, on sp spot on with his four staff. There's another smoke from No Tail, but doesn't look like he's gonna find anybody. Wow! Look at that gold graph. That single team fight was like a 4K gold swing. Fnatic just self-destructing a bit after it. Now down 6k experience as well. Is this going to be the same story as their first two games uh, versus Alliance yesterday where they had the early lead and just couldn't deliver? They're diving mid, but they're going to get surrounded here. Here comes the Cavalry. It's Kuroki in first. He'll go on to Hani now. But the Ward's doing some decent work. Now a hook shot. Caught all three from Trixie. Beautifully done. Wards get dropped as well. Is there enough backup? That's the concern here. Trixie hooks in. He bit off more than he could chew and just didn't have error ready. It looked like a great hook shot, but there just was no backup there, Ben. Yeah, and the mech. I mean, they can't even kill Kuroki at this point. He has a point booster. He has almost 1,000 HP. And thank, then thank God for them that the wards were not available for the pit. So if Navi tried to rush here, it will be a quite a bit harder, but they might go for it anyway. And they will. They can do it, it looks like. They have the damage. Funnick can tank it. This will be Roche unless Fnatic want to fight. Can, not, can Fnatic take this fight? The wards are going to be up until... They Roche. need Pugna. They can't do it without Pugna. They do if they're tier 1. He might get here just in the nick of time. Fnatic are... No, he TP's to the tier 2 bottom. It's about the same distance. He has the mech. He has the Pugna ward. They cannot fight without him. And Roche is low. I think it's going to fall here. Trixie taking the, the Viper damage. The ultimate comes out. Now he's on the run. He drops low. They bring him down off the bat. But now it's Era into the front line. Doing what damage he can. Icefall deployed. Blast doing work. The CM ultimate zoning 2. Three heroes off. Hani's going to fall. Two dead. Three dead. It could be four. It could be more. No tail jumping in. He tries to bring down Funnick. He needs one more right click. Funnick's still alive. He's still alive. Triple kill from Funnick. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That hurts. Era does clean him up in the end. But this is going to be Navi's rush now. And this is a head-on disaster for Fnatic in the pit. Wow, I thought he was going to get him there. He had like 14 HP and medallion on him. That but freaking reactive armor, man. <laughs> yeah. What a spell. Too strong. That, yeah, this is also where if Alk was level 6, I no tail gets that kill. He would have had the right click damage, just would have been hitting faster. Would have been able to bring him down probably. And regening as well. Yep, and just more damage. 17, 17 minutes in, he still doesn't have level 6.
Yeah, this is the same thing that happened to them, as you said. In uh, their in the supports Alliance always game. seem to fall really far behind after the. They're latest. never farming, and they're always together. Like when they were pushing the T two, Fnatic was Navi had Dendi farming mid as well as Viper farming top, and the supports were getting all the creeps on bottom. So, like Navi came out ahead in, going the in fight as well as the farms. Oh no, there's an Ags on Havost. He's very tanky, and now who do you go on? Dendi's got Aegis. Havost is really tanky, and in fact, they're in trouble now. No tail Sunstrike brought down. He's off. Navi just rolling at this point. They do lose one on the backside. They lost their Shadow Shaman. That could be a crucial kill. Now Dendi, isolated and focused upon. Habos just not finding a good target to latch onto. Now he gets hooked. He gets cog, but he's still tanking. He's still standing strong here. Dendi's back in fighting condition and jumps in again. Now the Chakram. Funix here, and it's clean up in aisle three. Fnatic on the run, getting run over by Navi. Three heroes down. Could be four. No Tails already respawned. Era barely able to TP out with his life. That was with the Shadow Shaman dying very early in the fight, and it still didn't go that great for Fnatic. It wasn't that awful, I guess. They got rid of the Aegis, but... Havos is too farm now. Lifestealer doesn't have the farm to compete with him. He's just going to get Viper struck every time during Rage. And unfortunately, Fnatic just don't have another great damage dealer. The, the support out that can transition to a semi-carry doesn't have the farm. The Pugna dying a lot this game. And not really your primary damage dealer, more of just the, the AoE, you know, Siege type hero. It feels like Fnatic don't have the damage to cut through Navi's armor. Too tanky at this point. The Timber Saw is really tanky. Even Kuroki well. is. Phoenix almost got Bloodstone at 18 minutes. Yeah, and that was with like him not even having boots like five minutes in, maybe even eight minutes in. And you know, a lot of it just goes back to the fact that he never died. Like right. compare the two offlaners, five one and five on him. Trixie one and eight. Now, not all of those deaths are completely Trixie's fault. Like the one bottom lane, his teammate kind of left him out to dry, but some of them definitely are. And the difference is really costing them. We do see Asanji Yasha out now for Era, but th they just need like big damage from somebody, and I guess it's got to be him. It's but like you said, Viper, Viper can just kite him. Yeah, Viper can kite him, and it, if they go on Viper, they lose the fight, though. And so once Rage ends, Invoker can kite him easily all day. Mm -hmm. Four Staff, Cold, cold Snap, Four Spirit. Another smoke gank for a Tier 1 from Fnatic. Two games in a row. This is normally a harbinger of being really far behind, and indeed, they are. 15k experience behind, 12k goal behind. Pretty much desperation from them. Normally you have to like ignore Viper and team fights and pick off the weak heroes, but he's so farmed at this point that you can't really ignore him and you won't do enough damage to anybody else to be able to kill a Shadow Shaman or Invoker at a reasonable this, spot. This Viper has gone for his own four step. Pabos does not want to be dealing with those cogs and there's just nothing they can do now. They cannot lock him down. I don't think it's possible at this point. Maybe they Alex stun him full duration and then cog him and hookshot him for a few seconds, but then he just four steps away. He probably will he'll probably drop to like half HP from that. Yep. A war drug, but only 300 tower 300 damage on the tower and a glyph. That was not that great. Would have liked to see Havos there for that. Yeah. If they're gonna drop them. But. Well, looks like they're gonna make a stand. The T2 Fnatic wants to fight without the wards. This is probably as good as the fight as they're gonna take, especially with no more Aegis on Dendi. Navi's like, well, mid didn't work. Let's try bottom. And they've got their Bloodstone up now. Uh, drums are coming soon on Puppy, and Fnatic could get caught out here. If Navi want to dive this, the Havost is clearly the bait, and Fnatic have to know it. They're going to reveal the run. smoke Trixie, but maybe reveal it too much. He continues running in, just gets assassinated by the supports here. I thought he would have backed off for sure. Now the Sunstrike gets nicely split between a few heroes, not doing that much damage. Now an Infest. Get me out of here, Hani. But Fly will be the secondary victim, and Navi just cruise forward. Taking down the, the creep wave and looking at another tier two. The second to last of the game. Funic does drop. Low, but not dead. And he's got a regen rune. I don't think they'll break base here, Ben, but they're going to take a tier two and probably farm the enemy jungle. Go push in mid. Maybe go for the tier two top next. Yeah, they could just wait for wards. It's only 30 seconds, so they could wait one more wave if they wanted to. Maybe they will try and break the base now. Top lane is pushing out, but not massively. And Fnatic are not exerting pressure anywhere else on the map. They don't have Trixie's Prophet this game. They don't have the split push to stop this for head-on assault. And Fnatic just goes in. YOLO straight onto No-Tail. Maybe a bit too far, but they'll just Timber Chain out. Meteor casually flopped out. Navi, it's just like, we'll throw a bunch of shit at them and something will hit. Casual meatball. Yeah, why not? Meatballs for dinner, not what they were looking to have. These are not the kind of meatballs Fnatic wanted to be snacking on. And Funic just taunting them at this point at the Timber Chain. The Dwarves get dropped. These are really effective with all five heroes here. Navi sieging the tower. Fnatic just constantly being chipped away at Funic. Unlimited mana pretty much at this point. And now the Tier 3 has fallen. It seems the end times might be upon Fnatic. 
They might lose their racks. They've got to take the fight soon or it's going to drop. But easy four staff usage allows Navi to back off. Just shock from in. Right click the racks a few times. Take the range racks. And I love the fact they're focusing it for first with no regen on that racks. Securing one lane of racks. Uh, or one racks rather. They'll go for two now. They continue to push. Fnatic just hiding on the backside. Even with the wall of wards, it's the Viper doesn't care about these. He really doesn't. He's so tanky. He's so far. Havost is just a monster. And now they've got Shadow Shaman Ikes as well. It's going to be even easier to push. Trixie runs in. Trixie back to the base with you, buddy. He's dead, down for the count. Now Atani next in line. Era tries to focus a boast. He's seen an opening here, but it ain't a very good opening. Two heroes dead. And Navi, that's two. That's one full lane of Rex now down. That was just not good positioning by Trixie. He went in during the 10 second cooldown in between when Nether War dropped. And when it can be recast. Wow. Navi stay alive and Fnatic go home. That was just. They got 4 0 this event. 2 0 in their two best of threes, 2 0 in each match. They did not win a game here at Starladder Season 8, and you really got a feel for this team. I mean, they've had a lot of disappointments finishing second at the past few events, but this has to hurt. Great performance from Navi, though. Especially losing in that fashion. That was just crushing, crushing fashion. It's like, I felt like they were never close in any of their games after the 10-minute mark. Mm. Maybe the 15-minute mark. That was bad. Well, it hurts for Fnatic, but Navi seem reinvigorated, and I think their drafting has really improved from day one. Seems like they're getting a handle on the, this patch. Well, not this patch, but this tournament and how teams are playing a bit better. And they're also giving Dendi a Dendi hero, too. You know, if Dendi bothers Puppy enough, finally Puppy's like, okay, I'll give you what you want. <laughs> and here's an interview with the boss. Oh, it might be in Russian. Uh, I believe this one is in Russian. Yeah. Well, well, if you want to watch that one, guys, twitch.tv slash starladder1. But Ben, Fnatic goes home, Navi advances, they'll wait Alliance, oh wait, Alliance or Sigma. That match is coming up, uh, I believe, in a few hours from now, like two and a half hours, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a 1v1 tournament going on. I don't think we're actually streaming it today. Uh, for those who didn't heard, well, there's going to be a 1v1 tournament. Each of the four teams here have one player There's all uh, participating. There's also four amateur players participating. And we'll be streaming it starting tomorrow from the semifinals. It's so EGM, Trixie, I think? EGM, Trixie, Trixie, Miguel, and who's playing for Navi? I'm not sure. Uh, it's one, one of the Navi players. And then there's four amateurs competing with them as well. Uh, the round of eight will be starting soon, but uh, I don't think we're streaming it. So, uh, well, as for this series, Navi moving on, do you, how confident do you feel about them after this match? Do you think it's just Fnatic looking weak, or do you think Navi has really improved and could beat Alliance or Sigma when they drop I out? mean, Navi just looked pretty much the same like they did yesterday. Navi, their draft was much better. Um, but the play was the same, you the felt? The play was the same, I, th I think. Like, if they had a good draft yesterday, th uh, yeah, it's not like they made huge mistakes yesterday aside from glaring draft errors. So this is just Navi finding their form, getting what they like, and playing the way they like. Will somebody take them out of their comfort zone, I guess? Do, do, mm. do they get the Invoker first ban? I think it's really difficult to pick and ban versus Navi because if you look at their heroes, none of them are like a first pick material, right? It, they didn't get an Alchemist, they didn't get a Wisp, they didn't get the Enchantress that they're known for too. So it's difficult to pick and ban versus them, and Fnatic definitely did not do a very good job of it. Um, and like with the Invoker first pick too, do you really want to ban Invoker and let um, an Enchantress in the pool? Do you really want to give them Alchemist? It's it just, even even the first banning phase is extremely difficult versus them. Any other closing thoughts on the series? Um, I think Navi just looked really good. I think they won't be, they'll be favorites if they face Sigma. I think they'll be just very slight underdogs if they face Alliance. Yeah, Alliance was executing like pristinely yesterday. Yeah. And we'll I have to see if they keep it up today. I think that um, Navi won't be outdrafted again by Sigma, although I think Alliance has the potential to outdraft Navi. Potentially. I, I'm with you there. So coming up next, guys, is going to be Alliance versus Sigma. That's the best of three. I believe we have a two and a half hour break before it happens. We'll try and get some content for you guys. Hopefully, Shiver can come back with some interviews from our players, our managers. Uh, we'll see what we have to offer. Uh, but for now, it's Alliance versus Sigma. Two and a half hours to go. Navi, do move on, though. That's the story of our first match here today. You're watching Star Ladder Season 8, the LAN Finals here, live from Kiev, where LD and Merlini be on the summit. We'll be back in a bit.
For the first time ever in the eighth season of Legendary Star Ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. 